Hello, everyone. It is Craig here today, and happy Saturday, I guess I should say. First off, it's, uh, I, I don't, I, it's still March, I believe, and uh, last Saturday of March. And so, yeah, it's, I, I don't know what everyone's doing out there. I'm guessing they're either outside walking or sitting outside or sitting inside because that's all you should be doing. So we figured, why not? Sit down and have a little chat with everyone out there. So it's not just me, of course. So also on this is, I, you know him, you love him. It's Pete. Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday. Yeah. So I think we're just, uh, for the most part, we're just going to really well, answer questions. Yeah, there's a couple things, though, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to start out with. Um, first... Um, I have to say a huge thank you to you guys, uh, our audience, uh, your support always, but in particular these last few weeks has been more than I can, uh, more than I can put into words, has meant more than I can put into words, not just for me, but for all of us, um, especially your support of dreams. Um, you know, I've pointed out multiple times recently that uh, the way we're able to do this, the way we're able to do everything we do is because of Dreams Unlimited Travel. And uh, I've been encouraging folks show their support by booking their vacations with Dreams. You've been listening um, and it's helping. It really, I can't tell you how much it's helping right now. Um, so I would encourage you to keep doing that. But thank you, please, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for that support. Um, and I also have to really thank my team um you know it's one thing to say you know how loyal you are when things are going good it's another thing to say show how loyal you are when there are challenges and i gotta tell you i have an amazingly loyal group and i'm honored by them um and grateful i'm gonna be careful because i'm gonna get emotional very grateful for them right now um so and i also have to i i really i've got to give a shout out to um our partners at disney um in walt disney travel in particular claire bilby who runs walt who's the head of walt disney travel and uh joanne delgan um you know we, we work with a lot of different companies there are no, you know for whatever their faults are with Disney that I'm, I'm happy to point out from time to time. Um, the, the, the level of support they give to their travel agent partners is unmatched in the industry. Um, there is not another company that we work with that even is even in the same realm with Disney in terms of support of their travel partners. And can't tell you how much, how important that is right now. Um, so it's very important for me. I, I just wanted to make sure I started off with that, um, saying those thank yous. And, you know, in particular, my business partner, John, John Magi, is the best business partner you'd ever want. Um, you want to talk about strong and steady in a crisis, man, oof, strong and steady. Always, He was always like that. He's always been like that. Um, but and my, my agents uh, with Dreams, what they've been dealing with, and, you know, there's a reason having travel, having a travel agent is important. And I don't think that's ever been more evident than it has been now because it's my agents that have had to be on the phone and figuring out these cancellations and keeping track of all of it and what it means and guiding their clients through this. Um, and not the clients themselves having to make these phone calls and figure all this stuff out on their own. That's, you know, and when you stop and think about it, you don't pay more for this agent, right? The agent's paid by the commission from Disney. It's not paid by you. Um, so, you know, I just need, I, I'm, you know, moments like this, you become, you, you really get grateful for what you have. And I'm so incredibly grateful for the incredible group of people I get to work with and I'm surrounded by. So wanted to make sure I threw that out there at the beginning. Didn't expect to get emotional, but you know what? Every day right it's, now. It's you. It's Pete it's Warner. It's me, and it's also <laughs> every day right now. There is a moment I'll be sitting, 
you know, and a lot of it, you know, we'll get these, um, we'll get these emails from either listeners or clients, um, <laughs> saying something really nice. And it just, I'm just, I'm like, I break down. Um, but yeah, it is me, but it's even more me in these past couple of weeks. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to make sure I put that out there that, um, I, I really do appreciate it. You are, you know, without you, we're not here. Without you guys, we're not here. It's true. You got nothing to do. Um, so you're thanking us for all the content we're putting out. And I got to thank you for being here to watch it and read it and interact with us. Um, mm-hmm. So, but <laughs> I know that we have, uh, we have some folks in, uh, oh, I, I do want to talk about uh, one thing before we start taking questions, but you can start putting your questions up. And uh, we got a couple folks in the chat room. Jackie Gailey's in there along with Paul Krager. And, and they're going to be. And Tom Bell. We have a lot of representation oh, today. There's a lot of people in there. Okay. <laughs> um, Katie Whirling. Every, oh, Katie. Hey. Talk about a great lady. And her mom, too. Um, but uh, one thing I want to talk about was the announcement that came out yesterday that uh, Disney World is closed until further notice. Um, I think they got tired of the questions, when are you opening, when are you opening, because they don't know. So they just kind of did an, an until further notice, um, which confused, I think, more people than it informed. But I don't know what else they could have said, honestly. You know, my initial thought was that they were going to do this on a, t- a rolling two-week basis. So they get close to the end of the uh, end of March, and they're going to say we're closed until the middle of April. Um, but I think that really all they could say is we don't know. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also important. Craig and I were talking about this before we went live. <clears throat> I think it's also important for people to start getting their heads wrapped around. Even when they do open, it's not going to be a switch getting flipped and all of a sudden the parks are open and it's back to normal. Um, they just let go of all their college program cast members, right? That's a huge part of their workforce. And I was pointing out to Craig, maybe this will convince them that relying so heavily on college program is a bad idea because when they reopen these parks, Let's say, you know, I always say about 60% of the frontline cast members are college program. Let's say I'm completely wrong and it's only 30. Let's say 30% of the frontline cast members are college program. Well, guess what? You're going to have to open your parks with 30% fewer cast members to run things. How are you going to do that? They're not going to be able to reopen full steam. So what you're going to see is a slow burn, a slow roll of openings. You may have, you know, hours. you may have, they, they may cap the number of guests coming into the parks. Um, there's also a question about food. You know, they are normally on a very, uh, you know, very set schedule in terms of how they order their food and have the restaurants, you know, fully stocked with everything they need. Well, they can't order food because they don't know when they're going to open. So, you know, there's all these logistics. It's not just a matter of, like I said, flipping a switch and everybody comes on in. Um, so it's really, uh, uh, I, I think everybody needs to get their head wrapped around that slow roll. And I don't think we're seeing these parks open until at least June. I hope I'm wrong. If there has ever been a time that I hope I'm wrong. It's now, but I think June at the earliest is when these parks are going to open. So, yeah, that's all right, what, that's what yeah. I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of on boat with that too. It just I've said it a couple times now this past week. It just to me there's something in my gut saying June, like get all the way through May and then come back in. But I will say that you know I don't want to try to paint a bright spot on this rainbow but when it reopens you know i I think 
it's going it's not just going to be a slow reopen for Disney. It's also going to be a slow reopening for guests getting back in. But I think it's going to be a very interesting time to get to Walt Disney World, assuming you're still not afraid of any any, you know, any health protocols with there. Like if if you're saying, you know what, there's always a chance this could still be around and I want to go in anyways. It is what it is, but uh, I think that the cast members are probably going to be at their very best. Not you know, not that the majority is ever terrible cast members all over, but these are cast members who are going to be grateful to finally getting back into the swing of things and getting back to the place that they love and and you know making making those memories for guests again. So it's I, I have a feeling. It's going to be a very magical place for a solid couple weeks, a month. Who knows? Maybe it's even a, a change that people will remember that they're, they were fortunate fortunate enough to work for Disney in such a great company as well, too. And they're they're going to, to not let that fade out of their minds for a while. So I, I think it could be a very interesting time. I, it, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting time. I agree with you. Uh, we have a question from Kimberly uh, Robinson. Do you think 2021 packages are still going to drop later this spring, trying to get locked in for October and the 50th anniversary? Um, <clears throat> you know, normally uh, October of, you know, or 2021 would be launching. Uh, they'd be re- opening those up probably uh, late, later in, um, or at least for uh, uh the 50th anniversary in October of next year, uh, we'd be seeing those open up around the end of May. Um, do I think that's still going to be the case? Um, no, I don't. And here's why. Um, Disney is not going to want to do anything to distract people from booking vacations this summer and this fall. Um, it was already a tough summer for Disney before this happened. Um, if they release 2021, especially for the 50th, I think they're going to try and get as much back as they can in this year before they do that. I don't have that on any authority whatsoever. That's just my gut. Um, but I can tell you that um, I think it's in, personally, I think it's important to get people back booking vacations. I don't care if they're coming in June or if they're coming in October of next year. I think it's important to give people something new to book right now um, and kind of get that excitement going. So um, whether or not they'll do that, I don't know. Um, Whether or not they're just gonna write off the rest of this year and just dump rates, I don't know. Um, But I, you know, and I've communicated that to them. Open 2021 now. Open 2021 now. Um, give us something to book that is kind of outside the coronavirus window. But yet they've not done that. So, um, so I don't think they will, but I could be wrong. Um, oh, there's a lot of them coming in now. Uh, Joey Cobra, if Universal opens on the 19th, Will that force Disney? Nobody's opening on April 19th. Just let's all get together now, okay? Wake up. Nothing is opening on April 19th unless the hand of God himself touches this and coronavirus disappears miraculously. Nobody's opening on April 19th. And I don't know. Craig, I'll let you, it's a universal question, so I'll let you chime in. Uh, yeah, that's as far as what universal statement was, they they are setting, they're saying that they're closed through April 19th. With all of this, of course, they're not saying that they're going to reopen the day after the closure. It's that they are definitely closed through then. And I, I'm glad that that's why Disney, when they came out and just said they're closed indefinitely, but we know we're paying our cast members through April 18th. Like I I'm actually, I think that was a better move of doing it that way because I'm with you. It's, it's going to end up being extended anyways. So 
like what's I, I don't know what's the I don't I mean I guess it is nice to have hopes that maybe it will open up and in, in keeping them up in that regards but yeah it's it's most likely going to be going on anyway so at the most it's just knowing that okay a couple of days before April 19th we're probably going to give you an update if we're going to be closed for another month or just say another couple of weeks or whatever so I guess at the very least yeah it is it's a promise that at least we don't have to wait an indefinite amount of time without knowing what's coming next, that they're at least promising we'll give you an update in a couple weeks. Um, some folks are asking about John and Kevin because they haven't been seeing them on, on live stream. The only reason you haven't seen live streams from John and Kevin, he's been having some technical issues with that uh, that I know Craig's been working with him on. Um, I told him that I really want him to be doing some of these with us because I think people need to hear his voice. Um, so I don't know where that's at. Yeah, it's uh, so the problem right now, I need to check in with John again. It's been it's been since Monday, but uh, right now John's John's hold up is that the camera that he has for uh -huh. his computer isn't he's not happy with the look of it, but there like you, if you watch the Tuesday show this past week, you know, Corey was causing us a little bit of issues with his internet. But uh, with with John and Kevin's internet, I we tested it together and it is it is perfect. But John's not happy with the look of his camera. It was a little rough, so I'm not, I'm not going to lie about it. It's it was not perfect. Um, but it's as soon as we get all of that sorted out, they will they are ready to go on it. They they sound great and their connections perfect so we just we got to get that one little part taken care of first craig um allison is asking about uh, michael bowling and getting an update on michael it's i gave an update on him last night and <laughs> i'm connecting with walt uh so it's i not much has changed with michael he's just recovering at home and hopes that uh be you know hopes that he'll be able to get back at all this sooner than later so uh, Veronica uh, Rattlin likes my t-shirt wants to know if there's a story behind it I bought it on the dream I love this design they have it at world too um, love 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 this t-shirt it's my favorite Disney t-shirt right now um, and uh, I also have the the one from uh, from world so uh, same color same design just says Walt Disney World so <coughs> I, I like was gonna say I love like the last time I was on the dream when we did our November cruise like I loved all those those shirts that they're doing now that are you know DCL related they have like the one Disney dream one that specifically has the itinerary of like Nassau Castaway Key Port Canaveral on there I feel like they really up their games especially oh with no DCL. question but DCL has always had awesome merchandise so it's but not it was a surprise. It was particularly good. Uh, it was particularly good on the dream when I was uh, on it, the end of February. Um, I'm so grateful I got a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that four night, um, but yeah, no, the merch was the merch was fantastic. I actually video from that uh, that sailing. Um, that I got to put together and release is a good time to do it. Um, Somebody is saying here, uh, uh, Melin44 is saying, do y'all expect Cruise Line to reopen before, same time, or after the parks? I've seen people say summer 2021 for DCL reopening, which seems crazy. It is crazy. It's absolutely insane. And anybody saying that is just a troll. Um, because that's absurd to think that Disney Cruise Line, if Disney Cruise Line is offline for a year and a half, they, it's no, it's just not feasible. Um, and again, this is some of the stuff right now that I'm starting to see more and more of. Um, I saw something today on Facebook about um, Disney is going to go bankrupt. The parks are never going to reopen. This kind of hysterical nonsense is not helping. Situation is bad enough without these drama queens just because they're all they're sitting at home with nothing to do, so they're making up crap to say on Facebook. And that's all that is, and they need to be called out on it, uh, frankly, because it's so ridiculously stupid. Um, 
almost as stupid as saying the coronavirus is no different than the flu. Um, but close. Um, so I think you're talking about two very different businesses when you talk about World or the theme parks and Cruise Line. Um, Cruise Line is in a position when it's time to reopen, to just reopen. I don't think they have to ramp up necessarily. They may have some logistical issues about where the ships are and where the ships need to go, but I think they're in a different position than World. So, um, and each business unit is going to make that decision based on the information in front of them. So do I think it'll be before the same time or after? I would guess it would be probably either right before or around the same time um, as they open the parks. But again, it's a logistical issue, so it's really hard to say. Um, Summer Phillips is asking, um, what, do you, what are we most looking forward to when the parks reopen? What's the first thing you're going to do? Go. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. That's the first thing I'm going to do is just go. I'm going to go have dinner at the Wave. I'll probably have like lunch or breakfast at the Wave and then dinner at the Flying Fish. Um, and go into Epcot and kiss the ground as soon as I get through the turnstiles. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, just go. I just want, you know, and, I, and I, 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 I've talked about this a couple times on different shows. Um, and I'm hearing more and more of it uh, from people. Um, this sense of appreciating the parks more now that they're closed. You don't realize what you have till it's gone. Um, and I know that's, uh, that's certainly true for me. Um, so I just want to go. I just want to go. I got to be honest with you. I'm very, very tempted to just get in my car and drive down just to be on property and drive around a little bit. Um, not get out of the car. <laughs> There's nothing to do. But uh, uh, A lot of people have been doing it. So I, I have not done it yet, but I, I know I've seen on a lot of my friends who, who also do this stuff with us. And I know Kathy and Katie have done it at least once or twice so far. So uh, it's not like, it's not like it's a rare thing to be doing right now, but I want, I want Disney popcorn right now. It's the, the one nice thing is I, I love, I don't love Mickey bars, but I like the Mickey premium ice cream sandwiches. And now that you can buy those in Publix, like I've we we've stocked up that I don't necessarily need to go in because I'm craving that. But I I really want to just be in there and have some popcorn, even though I don't like the popcorn as much once they once they switched it over with Orville Redenbacher uh, a, a couple of years ago. Or they switched it to Pop Secret from Orville Redenbacher, but it's still just something about having popcorn at, at Walt Disney World is just it's something I miss. Popcorn, ice cream, all taste different mm -hmm. at World. You can buy Mickey bars in the store. It's just not the same as having one in the park. I, I will tell you that when it comes to the ice cream sandwiches, I prefer the ones at Walt Disney World over home. But the Mickey bars that you can buy at, at grocery stores, I actually prefer those ones to the ones in the parks. I know that's probably no, sacrilege, but I, I'm not a it huge is. fan of them. So the fact that they're smaller and feel like they use less chocolate on it, I think I like them more. It's Craig. It's <laughs> Craig. Um uh, let's see. A lot of questions coming about, um, when the parks open up, um, do you think, uh, do you think you'll, they'll limit the number of guests in each park when they reopen? Um, uh, will the parks lower capacity? Um, yes, I think as I, when I, when I was saying before about the slow, slow roll reopening. I think that's one of the ways they are going to lower capacity. I also think in terms of social distancing, um, you're going to see every ride have a virtual queue and they're going to limit the number of people. I don't think they're going to be standby queues when the parks reopen. Um, and I'll guarantee you right now, that is what a group of people are working on at this moment, uh, how to implement that. 
and what the implementation strategy is uh, for when they reopen. Um, and so I'm pretty sure every um, every conceivable person they can get their hands on to work on that problem is exactly what they're focusing on right now. Um, I know from, you know, just even from the standpoint of my business, um, you know, there's a limited amount that I can do during this situation. Um, I have to think about what, what things look like after. Um, so I think a lot of businesses are, are doing that. And I think Disney certainly is one of them. Uh, Emily Phillips is asking how mom's doing. Um, mom's great. <laughs> she's, she's like, you know, I talk to her at least once a day and she is, you know, her voice is up and, and she's happy and she's, she's mom, she's mom. So she's doing awesome. She needed toilet paper. So we had to deliver some toilet paper down to her this morning, but, um, but thank you for asking about her. Um, uh, let's see. God, there's somebody coming in. Um, um, somebody's asking about uh, the UK deals you know, for, for Great Britain. <clears throat> supposed to come out uh, for 2021 are supposed to come out April 2nd. What do you think it will be? A, I have no idea uh, on what I think it'll be, but I think we should watch to see whether or not those deals do come out April 2nd. As I was just saying before, I think Disney is going to want to focus on putting as many people back in the resorts and parks this year as they can. If they delay that release, it's a really good indication that the fall 2021 release that we're looking for uh, in terms of... Uh, Walt Disney World for the 50th anniversary is also going to be delayed. So um, that's should be, you know, that that's the sort of stuff we have to, to read the tea leaves. That's kind of what we have to do. Um, that is also handled by an entirely different division of Walt Disney Travel. Um, that's not handled by the division here in Orlando. That's handled by uh, the division. You know, the European division is based in London and it's a completely separate outfit, basically. Um, so, you know, the people that I work with here have nothing to do with uh, the people that are doing that in, in Europe. Uh, and as a U.S.-based agency, we can't do anything with uh, Walt Disney Travel Europe. Um, so uh, I don't have the same contacts and the same information, but I think it's safe to safe to say from a tea leaf from a tea leaf standpoint um if they release those 2021 packages for uh for europe on april 2nd then we probably will see more uh see, see our stuff come later in may for uh for the fall of of next year um uh, multiple people are asking what would you do currently if you have a trip planned within the next few months. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to, I'm not going to criticize anybody. Well, I mean, April, you know, you're not, you're not going right. Um, May it's dicey, but you're probably not going. So I'm not going to criticize anybody that's going to, that, that's canceling a trip for April or May. Um, that's a perfectly legitimate thing to do. Um, given the circumstances. It's the people that are canceling them in December that I'm like, what did you just not want to go? Or are you so hysterical that you think for the rest of our lives, we are going to have coronavirus and be trapped in our homes. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I have a cruise scheduled for the end of August, a, uh, a, a, a carnival cruise to Alaska. And if you want to know, people have been asking about the Carnival Cruise. Um, later on today, I will I will have, before this broadcast is over, I will have a specific time. But later on today, Sean and I are going to do a Facebook Live on the DCL Fan Facebook group. And we're going to talk about my first sailing on Carnival 
in January. Wasn't going to do that. Um, let me just ask him now. Talk for a little bit, Craig. So uh, I know a lot of people asked about my shirt. Uh, this was a gift from Pete. Uh, it is it? a. Uh, it was a exclusive shirt to. I think all of Disneyland Resort during the Pixar Fest celebration that happened. Uh, God, that was I think that was 2018 now when that happened. So a couple years ago. And when we were all out there together, sometimes Pete will take us all, like it, we'll walk through the Emporium or somewhere else and uh, Pete will get in his shopping moods and he'll he'll say, well, what, what do you guys think? Like what? What do you think? What 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 would you buy if if you could buy anything right now? And as soon as we say like, oh well, I think that's cool, then he'll just run over and pick it up and and buy it for us. One of the many amazing things that Pete does for us. And this was one that when I was there with him, I pointed it out when he he was in that mood and asked, and I said, well, it's not in my size, but that's what I would buy if it was here and. So couldn't get it, but then uh, him and Rhino went back out without me for another trip later on. And when when he got home, he handed me the shirt because they finally had it back in my size. So this was this was a gift from Pete from from that trip and uh, all the goofy shirts I buy. I mean, they're they're always usually they're either from Box Lunch if they're like the more professional looking ones, or if they're the this style of more Hawaiian shirt than their they're just the ones that you get in Disney Parks or Castaway Key or Disney Cruise Line. I don't, you know, I, I don't go all out and on finding these. It's more or less if I'm like, if I see them and I, I like them a little bit, then I'll be like, yeah, I could be comfortable sitting at home when it's like bordering in the mid 90s today already and my office is starting to, to heat up and I just need to stay cold. This is a nice airy shirt for that. Well, um, it's very John Lasseter, and you know he is uh, Craig is our John Lasseter without the wandering hands. Um, but okay, so seven p.m. tonight Eastern Time, DCL fan Facebook group. If you want to know what I thought of Carnival, um, my first Carnival cruise, go ahead and uh, go ahead and head over there for that, or make sure you join. Um, but uh, I want to get back to the question about uh, canceling. Uh, I was saying that I have uh, an Alaska cruise booked on Carnival for uh, the end of August. Um, I have a seven-night sailing on the Fantasy at the end of May. I have another Carnival cruise scheduled for the middle of June. Um, I'm not canceling any of those. They can cancel them, but I'm not. I'm not. Um, and I just think, for me, you're asking me my opinion. Um, now, if I had a trip scheduled in April, yeah, of course, I'm going to cancel that. But I have a trip scheduled in May and I, the end of May, and I'm not. Um, am I being hopeful? Yes. Do I really think that sailing is going to happen? No, I don't. But I'm going to wait because, you know, I want everybody to stop and think for a second. Three weeks ago, none of this was going on. I mean, we knew about coronavirus, but it wasn't this, Right. You know, social distancing, uh, phrases like social distancing and out of an abundance of caution and shelter in place were not part of our everyday vernacular, right? We weren't talking about this stuff. So I don't know what we're going to be talking about in three weeks. I don't know what we're going to be talking about in two months. I don't know. So, you know, and again, it's this need that people seem to have, and I get it because I share it. Uh, I need to know what the outcome of this is. And you want to know where your anxiety is coming from? It's coming from that. Because you're not going to know. We have to be okay with not knowing. That's not a decision you have to make today. You don't have to make a decision about the end of May today. You can if you want to react. But, and like I said, and that's, those are legitimate questions though. You know, April, May, June. Those are legitimate questions. December and January, if you're canceling a January cruise because of coronavirus, 
Because what's going to happen, mark my words, people are canceling these vacations. Things are going to ramp back up. They're going to want to take their vacation. And either the price is going to be higher or it's not going to be available. And they're going to go on social media and complain about it. And then I want you all to throw things at those people. You were stupid enough to cancel your December trip over coronavirus, and now you're complaining that you can't get it back? You got what you deserve. <clears throat> I, I, know, I know that sounds harsh, but it just drives me insane. It drives me insane. Why are you canceling December? I have my entire family coming down in December to celebrate my mother's 90th birthday on property. The concept of me canceling that now because of coronavirus, maybe back when I was on drugs, you know, but yeah, come on, it's stupid. It's still, I don't know what's going to happen. So until then, now look, if there's another reason where you, why you need to cancel, that's fine. But if you're doing it because of coronavirus, then you got to start asking yourself some serious questions. Why am I over panicking? Why am I reacting to this in such a way that I think the entire world is coming to an end? And then you got to wonder maybe why you feel so much anxiety. Because you're looking for answers you can't get, and you just have to be okay with that right now. So, yeah, <laughs> drives me insane. Um, uh, Megan is asking, uh, do I think... They'll use this as a reason to finally drop fall free dining. Oh, Megan, I think if anything, um, we're going to see discounts and free dining like it's our job. Um, it's going to be incredible, I think. That's personally what I think, that the discounts that are going to have to come out. Because, again, you know, I'll go back to 9-11 um, and what happened there. Everyone was terif terrified to get on a plane on September 12, 2001. By the middle of October, when the discount started to hit, everybody got over their fear. So it's going to be the same here. This is a traumatic experience, right, that we're going through right now. People are going to be concerned about, is it safe? Is it okay? And, you know, they offer a really strong free dining package. I can, I can imagine an awful lot of Disney fans going, okay, we'll take our chances. We'll take our chances. We're going. Um, yeah. And I think that's what's going to happen. Like I said, summer was already bad for them. Already. Remember, we started January 1st with a ton of discounts going through the summer. Uh, because they knew summer was going to be bad. That was before anybody was talking about coronavirus. So I don't think they're going to have any alternative. Now, the only thing that impacts that is if there is this pent-up demand as a result of the parks being closed, and as soon as they open them, then everybody rushes in. Now, obviously, if the resorts and the parks fill up, they're not going to offer discounts if they don't need to. So it really depends on how that goes. But that's the way it's going to break, one of two ways. It's going to be nothing in the middle. It's either you're going to have pent-up demand and everybody's rushing in, or you're going to have everybody holding off and waiting to see what happens. If everybody holds off and waits to see what happens, then you're going to see those discounts. So I, so I think a lot of the, I don't want to say, the people who are being unaffected by this financially – because they're able to work from home remotely or their jobs are just so important and critical that uh, it's not it's not having any impact on them. I mean, it's once this is all reopened again, it, unless they were using stock payouts or something to pay for their trips, it shouldn't really impact you that much. But this is where it's going to hurt the the person that we have been talking about for years now that the Walt Disney world and the parks in general are starting to price out. And that's the people that, you know, they, they need the best value they can get in order to be able to come down and experience those. If these are the, the people out there who are waiting tables to try to bring their kids to, to Walt Disney world. I mean, now they're even more in a hole because chances are they've, unless 
their restaurant does an amazing amount of takeout and people are tipping well on takeout right now, then they're essentially the ones who are on employment because of all of this. So it's, I think, I think a lot of people will be able to come back as normal once everything's into it, but this is going to have an impact on those people that, that were already struggling to come up with the means to, to take this vacation and now it could have potentially gotten even harder for them. But so if a discount does come out, they could make it possible. That would be, that would be great for them. Uh, Craig, take another question. I'm looking something up to answer a question that's, that's pending here, but I'll let you take another one. Okay. I apologize. Let me, uh, let me get out my cell phone here to where they're sending us messages. Cause I didn't have that open. <laughs> oh. When they open, can we have a dis unplugged party? I'm not no. in the pay grade to make that decision. I am so. not spend I am not spending <laughs> any money right now, okay? I'm not spending any money right now. And I'm I'm sure as hell not going to John saying, Hey, let's throw a party. Yeah. Um, uh, people want us to like show off more of our offices and such on Patreon one day. Oh then? no, this is this is so carefully crafted right now that you only see a certain amount. Because right now my office is a disaster area. That's what I was going to say in terms of mine too. Like I mean, you can clearly see that my office is a disaster behind me. I've got movies, books, random crap just stacked up on a shelf behind me. Uh, way too many tiki mugs in one area. I can't even be bothered to fold the blanket that's on the chair behind me. Uh, I apparently care more about the beer sign that's hanging on the wall behind me than my diploma that's just sitting propped up against the wall. So if you can kind of take all of that and really like put a perception of me together, then then you can imagine what's not being seen right now. It's kind <coughs> of just a, a disaster in here. Yeah, but a lot of us... A lot of us are one step away from an episode of Hoarders, so um, I'm, I'm pretty bad with that. Um, all right, so one question is asking, what do I think discounts are going to look like for the rest of the year? Um, and I think to answer that question, I got to take a look at what they're wh where they're at now. Um, I would pointed out that uh, all of a sudden, because like I said, we had a lot of discounts going through summer, and then it stopped on July 9th, right? Now, they've released a Sun and Fun room offer back into the system. And I'm taking a look. First of all, there's no Florida resident prices available after July 9th. Um, and the only offer that is available is Sun and Fun. So I'm just looking at randomly August 2nd through the 8th, right? Um, rack rate. For a standard room at Pop Century is 198. Uh, Sun and Fun room offer 168. I mean, it's not terrible, right, for summer, um, but not that great. That's not a steep discount. You get that number down to 150, then you're seeing a steep discount. But where a lot of these discounts are, and I'll take a look at this now for that same week. Um, let's take a look at Grand Floridian. Okay, so outer building, Garden View, Grand Floridian that same week. Rack rate is 669. This is going for 500. So that's uh, basically hundred, almost $170 off the per night price. That's a much better discount. Um, I'm going to tell you what, though. I think it's going to go even lower. I think it's going to go even lower. Because um, you got to remember that a hotel room doesn't just represent revenue for the price you're paying every night. It represents revenue in food at the hotel. It represents revenue in tickets to the parks and merchandise and everything else that you buy. So sometimes, sometimes the resorts are looked at as uh, what's known as a loss leader, that they'll take a loss technically on the price of the room because they're going to more than make it up in revenue, in the ancillary revenue that you spend when you're on site. 
And that's why sometimes, like uh, toward the end of last year, their turnstile numbers were down, but their revenue was up because they were getting more revenue from in-park purchases. I think you're definitely going to see increases in prices for T-shirts and merchandise and food and a lot of that ancillary stuff. I think you're going to see big increases in prices there. But they got to get in order to spend that money, to get that money. They're going to have to. They're going to have to adjust their prices. So right now they're also taking. I can look at this discount for Sun and Fun and see that there's no other offer. There's no Florida resident offer. There's usually there are multiple offers throughout the summer. And right now there's only Sun and Fun. So that tells me they're taking a wait and see attitude. They don't wanna. They don't wanna. I can't use that that expression live. Um, <laughs> you know exactly what I was gonna say. They don't want to. That's uh, um, the only way I know how to describe it. They don't want to go too far yet, right? They don't want to overdo it. And then, you know, like go all the way with like the best discounts they can offer just yet, only to find out they didn't need to do it. So again, this is going to this is going to I'm watching these numbers every day. I'm watching these numbers every single day to see any change in this. And again, I've been doing it for a long time, so I can kind of take a look. I can look at 502 a night at you know in August at an outer uh, outer building garden view at the grand. And say, yeah, it's about right. That's about right. That's about the right discount for that time of year. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll we're just going to have to wait and see on it. But I I personally believe they're going to have to they're going to have to run discounts, and they're going to have to go back. They're gonna they're going to have to go back to doing a real free dining, because you know a lot of people know now that when you reverse engineer those packages, sometimes they're not always a deal. And, you know, it's, it's the concept for something free. People don't care what they pay. Um, and that's very true with, with free dining has been. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it's, 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 int- you know, and I love this stuff, right? I, I dig this stuff. Um, I love reading tea leaves and, um, right now the tea leaves are telling me they're taking a wait and see approach two discounts for the rest of the year. Um, so good question, Megan. Thank you. Um, do you think Disney will give us Tammy Thomas? Uh, do you think Disney will give us a week or two warning before they open? Yeah, they're going to have to, right? Well, maybe not. You know what? Actually, no, let me think about that for a second. Maybe not because if they're going to want to control crowds, Best way to do that is say, oh, we're open tomorrow <laughs> because people, you know, you'll get locals, you get locals, but, you know, understand that Disney World is not as nearly as popular with Orlando locals as Disneyland is with Southern California locals. Um, so that might be one way of them ramping it up is no, it's just kind of, we wake up one morning and the Magic Kingdom's open and then, you know, I'll be running down there in my pajamas. Um, um, it, I'm not going to wait to shout. <coughs> gonna at least we're going to have a little bit of notice because the first thing they're going to do is when it gets close to being able to be able to open the the managers are going to have to start reaching out to the cast members and asking who can come in for their shifts and you know they shouldn't have anything else really in the way so it should be able to go back to normal on that but uh you know from then even if they're hinting if managers are reaching out to frontline cast members if there's a hint of potentially reopening uh we're going to start seeing it plastered on every single yeah. fan site out there saying Disney will potentially open up on this day and then once there's a firm schedule in place and they are confirming yes we have been asked to return then it will you know we'll know even if that is just a day's notice we'll know but uh beyond that too uh it's there's always the oper- there's always the chance that they could start scheduling people for shifts and then they show up and like and find out like well you're not actually going to be you're not going to be 
open for guests right away. We might actually spend a day where we spend time cleaning our areas, do training, something uh, along those lines. But it's 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 not going to be a huge secret completely. It's uh, everyone will make sure that everyone knows when Disney is opening, even if it is fifteen minutes notice. Um. I'm going to take one more, and then, Craig, you're going to take a few because I've got something i got to do real quick. Um, uh, somebody's asking um, about construction, and is the construction still going on, or have they suspended it? Um, I have it from a couple of different well-placed sources that construction has stopped completely, that no work is being done on any of these projects. Um, so with that being the case, these projects are going to be Delayed, but we are hearing that, um, and Craig, maybe you can either correct me on this or confirm it. That rat tattooey is pretty much done and ready to go, um, is what I'm hearing. And I wonder if that won't be something that they're going to pull the trigger on early. Well, depending, I mean, it was supposed to open at the summer anyway, but um, depending on when they reopen. Yeah, I. I'm not quite positive on that in terms of construction. I believe most of it was done, but then you still have programming and you have cast member training and uh, there's a lot of other things that go into it besides just construction being finished on it. So I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent positive that they would be able to go instantly to opening, but they're definitely, I, I know that, from everything I had heard that they were better, they were looking better for an earlier opening than definitely a, a later summer opening. So I think that uh, it's very possible that it won't take too long for it to get up and running, but I don't think it's going to be like surprise Ratatouille's open already once we open back up, but that's just my opinion on it. Uh, All right. So go ahead and go ahead and take a, a couple. I'll be right back. Okay. Here we go. I hope uh, there's questions in here that I can answer because I can already tell you for the most part if it's all the speculation on uh, openings and hotels and that that's Pete's Pete's stuff. I like to answer simple questions like where did Pete go right now? Maybe to the restroom? Maybe somewhere else? I have no idea. It could be any of those places. Uh, but that's probably where he is right now. So. <sighs> Uh, okay, I'll answer this one from Alex. If you could bring back one extinct attraction back from the dead, what would it be? I can answer that with, uh, with ease. I know there's lots of good ones out there from from Walt Disney World. I keep it to that. You know, some people would say bring back great movie ride. Others would others would say maybe even the backlot tour, one of the great attractions that. Magic Kingdom that's closed down or anything like that. I would actually, I want original Star Tours to return to to Star Tours. There's nothing against the adventures continue or the adventure continues, however they use that phrasing on it. I actually really like the when they've added the additions for the new movies onto Star Tours. I think it's it's a lot of fun. But I love classic Star Tours. If they could find they could find a way to just clean up that footage a little bit and and make it make it feel as realistic as as the version that's there right now does then i i would be all about that i i love 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 original star tours so what's my favorite tiki mug that i have i would say i'll try to i'll try to pull it out here so i'm going to roll away slowly goodbye he comes back, let him know that my headphones are on or something. <laughs> okay, so my favorite tiki mug that I have would be my first edition Trader Sam's uh, barrel mug. So it's not the rarest or unique mug or anything like that. So I'm not I'm not going to pretend like it is. This is the actual actual first edition one though because the the second edition that they put out was also marked as first edition. So a lot of people got confused and that one's also behind me somewhere there. 
because I'll never get rid of my barrel. But that one's my favorite one because uh, well, it's easy. It was my first one. So I got that when we took our first trip to Disneyland where we did our um, we did our East. I can't remember what we, we called it exactly. And I'm embarrassed because we just watched the video for it. But uh, we, we did our East meets West. I believe that's what it was called. And uh, Sean and I were staying at the Disneyland Hotel for that trip. And then... Uh, and then we were all scattered at the different hotels, but that's where we were staying. So we would hang out there every night together uh, as our wrap up at the end of the day, the entire group that was out there. And one night after everyone went back to their hotels, the rest, uh, you know, they all went back. Sean and I went back up to our, our room in the Adventure Tower and we were like, are we actually done for the night and of course the answer was no so we went back down and went inside the bar for the first time because we had only been we had only been sitting outside because the, the the patio area is so wonderful there and and so yeah we went inside the bar so once we saw it there we saw like all the mugs on display and and they had they i believe they had maybe started switching to the green mug that said first edition but they still had some of these and so when we went inside and saw all the mugs and that we could get them we're like yeah of, of course we'll we'll take it we want the shipwreck on the rock so we'll take it in the mug and then literally two days later that is when they actually ran out of the mug and it was finally out for good and they never got it back in stock so we got one of the last mugs with it with from that edition in there and i cherish it and it's kind of funny because sean was just like using it for a toothbrush holder and uh, just not disrespecting it but not not appreciating it for as it's important as i do but i'm also insane so what's my favorite muppet uh, if you can't tell behind rhino me, it's a tie i have rolf and then beaker those are my my two your, favorite, but Rhino favorite, would be my favorite. Your favorite human. Muppet is Rhino. He's my favorite human Muppet for sure. But I, I really, I, I'm proud of myself. I was able to just spend five minutes talking about one tiki mug while you were gone. So, um, I'm oh, learning right. how to stall. Hopefully, for time. we still have people watching. Um, they, we left. There is, lost there is one question here that comes up a lot that I want to address. Um, do you think Bob Iger got out knowing what would happen with closing the parks indefinitely? Um, a lot of people are speculating about that. Um, look, I have issues with certain things that Bob Iger did and didn't do uh, about the attention paid to the parks and the way it was paid to the parks. Um, but I believe him to be a real leader. And no real leader would have bailed like that. Um I do not think, because I'm going to tell you, I talked to a lot of people. They were blindsided by this. They were blindsided. Um, they just didn't, again, you know, let's just put things in perspective. Never in the 60 plus year history of these theme parks, 70 almost, 65. Um, have they ever had to close like this? Stop and think. Every Disney theme park in the world is closed. That is an extraordinary statement that no one a month ago would have imagined would be said. Um, and whatever Bob Iger's faults may be, I think he's very devoted to this company. And I, I think if he knew that this is what was going to happen, he would have stayed. They never would have done that. So I think it's a craven way of looking at it, and 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 I don't I don't believe, you know, that you know, these are people, right? I mean, we can the way we talk about them and the way we look at them sometimes we can diminish them or, or reduce them into like these one dimensional cartoon villains, um, but they're not. They're people, and I think that you know whatever. Whatever you think of Bob Iger, I think he's been an excellent leader for the company. I may have questions about certain areas that he's led in, but um, I think he's been an excellent leader for the company. Is clearly demonstrated by how well the company has done historically under his leadership. Um, I don't believe any real leader would have bailed 
and stuck it to somebody else to take care of in a situation like this. Um, I'm very glad he's still in the picture right now, that he's, you know, chairman of the board. He's still very involved. Um, you know, technically, Lex Luthor reports to him. So, and that's his name now for me. I'm not calling him Bob Japik. It's Lex Luthor from now on. Um, but he reports to, he, he still reports to Iger. So yeah. I'm sure Iger is still very involved in everything that's going on. So, no, I do not feel that this was some, you know, planned thing that he was going to get out while let, the let's, get was good. Let, let's be real, too, about Disney. I mean, so far since the Disney company has been around in, in terms of who you have as a CEO with it, you have Walt, you have Ron Miller, you have Michael Eisner, you have Bob Iger, and then JPEG now. And I hope I'm not missing any, or Michael's going to come through and strangle me. That no, I, I think you got it. Don't know. I'm missing out on someone important. So, I mean, arguably, if you're not a huge Disney fan, then maybe you can say that you don't know a lot about Ron Miller. But if you look at the, the rest, even if you look at a small list of five there, if you look at the fact that that Walt Disney... Bob Iger and Michael Eisner are namesakes and will forever be namesakes with the company. You also don't like, you know, you don't want to go out on a bad way considering people care about this company so much that you don't, you don't want your name tarnished forever. And even with Eisner's rough transition out, you know, it's uh, luckily a lot of people are remembering him for the good now more than the, the, the little bit of roughness there, but it's considering you're going to be remembered for a long time. You don't want to go out as the villain for sure. Um, no, I, I, I agree in, entirely. Uh, another question we get a lot of, um, I want to address, uh, Chad Thompson asks on a DVC point stay, would we be able to utilize dreams to, ha to handle other aspects of our trip? No. Um, like I said, we get paid through commission. Um, and we, there's no way for us to get commission on, uh, DVC points and um, we've you know there was a discussion at one point about charging for the trip planning portion um, for DVC members and that was something that I put the kibosh on um, because I uh, we you know we, we say that you know our services are at no additional cost to you um, and I don't want to put an, I, I didn't want to put an asterisk after that, you know, our services are at no additional cost to you unless, um, but I don't know in this environment now, you know, maybe that's something I need to think about. Maybe that's something I need to think about. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, we, we, you know, one of the things that, you know, with situations like this, you're forced to look at decisions you made. Uh, when things were going good and everything was normal and then say, okay, well, which ones do I have to revisit? And as I'm sitting here answering this question, I'm saying, well, maybe I should rethink that. I don't know, but it's a good question. We get it a lot. So as of right now, the answer is no. Next week, the answer may be sure. Um, we'll see. I want to we'll say, um, sorry, I need to correct myself on here. I'm really embarrassed as a Disney fan with this. Looking back at the CEOs on it, I, Walt was technically never CEO in terms of the Walt Disney Company from what I'm reading on this site. It said Roy Disney, Don Tatum, Card Walker, Ron Miller, Michael Eisner, Bob Iger, and then Bob Chapek. So, Yeah, I never, I, I didn't know that either. Um, color me, Craig. Uh, let's see. Chat with the people while I look for questions. I'm going to answer a few more of these, and then we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, uh, I saw another one that I was going to answer at one point in time here. Oh, someone brought up Lord of the Rings with Disney or Universal. It's never going to happen. Uh, it's just, it, it's not. It's the issues that the issues that went in with even the wizarding world with JK and Warner brothers finding, finding a 
a collaboration with with a theme park that they could make work like that took that effort the tolkien estate is tolkien estate is like 10 times more strict and worse on it it's just it's unless they finally get a family member who one day is like so in charge of all of it that they don't care what happens with it and they're ready to just throw it to the wind it's 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 never going to happen so i know the rumors come up every now and then with universal i think but even then like there was times when i worked at universal when people would like i would see a rumor online like the Tolkien estate just came by universal to do a tour and get a talk to him. I'm like, well, it's kind of weird that usually those tours happen in the middle of the day while the parks are open so they can see it. And no one that I know at either park is talking about it. So I, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I don't, I don't, I don't think it's ever happening, but who knows? Maybe, maybe one day when the world is upside down and the, sun doesn't rise or i don't i don't know <laughs> all right tracy shortland is asking can dreams not deal with uk clients at all or just not book uk offers uh we can absolutely deal with uk clients we just can't book the offers that are exclusive to your market we can't book those you know 800 day tickets you get for 75 dollars um or you know the free dining you know, all the time offers, uh, we can't book those. Um, but, uh, if you're a UK client and you're looking, you know, to book a package or a cruise or anything like that, we can absolutely do that. Just it's going through Walt Disney travel us, not UK. Um, uh, Katie is asking, when should I cancel my May 29th, June 2nd, Disney world vacation? Um, like I said, you're in that window now where it's reasonable to be talking about this. Um, so it depends. Um, if you are paid in full on a package with that, um, I would say wait until they cancel it so that you're sure that you are getting any cancellation fees or anything like that back. If it's a room only, um, you're not going to have to worry about that because I think your cancellation window on a room only is like five days before arrival. Um, I would wait until that moment when you have to buy tickets, airline tickets. Um, you may have them already. And then that adds the other factor into it. Is your airline going to allow you to cancel um, without penalty for those dates? So I think for a lot of people, it's about waiting until that window opens up where, okay, Disney has said they're not going to be open and they're, you know, so they're not going to charge you penalties. The airlines aren't going to charge you penalties. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a dance. It's a dance. So it really depends on your situation. If it's a room only, you're free to, you know, I can, I, I'm not going to criticize anybody. Like I said, April, May, even into June. Um, I'm not going to criticize anybody canceling. Uh, those those vacations, um, but uh, it's question of kind of waiting to make sure because if you cancel and it's not inside their cancellation window, you're going to get charged. You're going to get charged. The airlines are going to do it. Um, I had to go six rounds with Delta because I canceled uh, a week a long weekend in New York for supposed to be last weekend before they had done anything and they were charging me $200 a ticket and I'm like not with all the money I've spent with you screw you I am not flying into the hotbed of coronavirus activity in the United States right now um, they eventually gave me my money back but we also had you know the same thing with Turkish Airlines because we were supposed to go to um, Egypt in a few weeks with uh, Adventures by Disney well, Turkish Airlines hadn't actually canceled those flights. You know, those flights weren't marked as canceled. So if we tried to cancel them, we were going to be charged a penalty. And those were expensive tickets. And then yesterday, they finally canceled those, those, those flights. And so we were able to get all of our money back. So that's kind of the dance you got to play with this. It's kind of like, I kind of got to wait and see and see how it goes. Um, 
Craig, somebody's asking, why are you so cool? Uh, I'm not. So that look at that beard. Come on, how can you have that beard and not be cool? I well, it's I prove it every single day. I know a lot of people have been asking my opinion about Le Cellier. I don't really have an opinion. I don't. I. I have stated many times, and I know I my opinion is unpopular when it comes uh, to the rest of the team on it. I don't really go to Walt Disney World to eat steak. There have been rare occasions where I'm like, I really, really am going here solely for the steak. Like when California Grill for a while had that cowboy ribeye that was just out of this world. Like I, I would go up for that, but I, it's been a couple of years now since I've ate at Yachtsman. Not that it was bad. It's just, it's a $60 steak that if you go to a really nice butcher and get a nice cut of meat and you know how to season and cook a steak properly, you can do it for a third of the price and, you know, throw a couple of candles out there and make the right atmosphere. And you have just as great of an experience at home as you do going out to eat. And it's a lot more private. So uh, with Le Cellier, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever had an atrocious meal there. When my family used to travel, we always would go to Le Cellier, especially when we were on the dining plan. And it was only uh, it was only one credit back then. But I just in general, it's I'm not going to ever run out and be like, you know, where I have to go to eat tonight, Le Cellier. That's it's just never going to be be it for me. So not not when I enjoy cooking steak at home, and you know, and I try to perfect it at home so that way I can eat something that I enjoy that's usually very expensive out in other restaurants. I can eat it at home for a lot more uh, affordable price more often. Well, you know, where Le Cellier is concerned, in my opinion, um, you know, A, you've got atmosphere, right? I mean, the atmosphere is unmatched. It's beautiful, right? It's gorgeous, dark, very romantic, kind of, you know, intimate restaurant. Um then you have cheese soup, you have pretzel bread, you have pretzel bread dipped in cheese soup, and you have some outstanding steaks. Those things are all true of Le Cellier, but what's also true is it's absurdly overpriced. Mm -hmm. It is absurdly overpriced. I can get a steak every, I can get a filet every bit as good, if not better, than what I will get <clears throat> at Le Cellier over at the Flying Fish. It's a slightly longer walk. Um, yachtsman, I stopped doing Yachtsman because they got very inconsistent. Um, but I haven't been there in a long time. Snooty I, at Yachtsman. Well, <clears throat> I can always throw that. I can always throw that shade right back at them. But um, the uh, I, I need to go back and do it again because it's been a long time. So it's really not something I can. I can comment on. Um, all right, let's do a couple more. Um, let's see. Um, uh, do I think DCL, Tony DNY is asking, uh, do I think DCL will do deep discounts to get guests back cruising? I think that is almost certain that there are going to be i mean just take a look at the number of florida resident and military discounts that are being released right now going into the summer i mean the sheer volume of them is ridiculous um but i think <clears throat> because the narrative around coronavirus and cruise ships was so strong and it doesn't help that you know, they're saying a number of people that were on the Panama Canal sailing have now tested positive. Um, they're going to have to. They're going to have to do something. Um, then again, you know, because of the rabid fan base that they have, they are insulated to some degree more so than other cruise lines um, from bad press. Um, we are, as a, as a people... Um, more apt to overlook certain things um, because of our affinity for the brand. So, you know, I, but I think it's almost certain, far more certain with Cruise Line than it is with World, that 
there that they will uh, they'll they'll have to do discounts. I mean, look, if there had been an epicenter outbreak in Walt Disney World, then the conversation would be different. Um, and you know, there wasn't an out you know a quote unquote outbreak that we know of on cruise line. You know, Princess on the other hand, I think Princess is going to start paying you to go on their sailings after the press they've had. Um, but I think absolutely you're going to see that. Absolutely. I'm, I mean, I'm banking on it. I think I said on either one of these or the DCL show or something that I want, I want to hit platinum before the, the booking comes up for, for the new ship, like, like many other people. And right now I'm at eight completed cruises and, so I think I, I don't know when the booking will happen for the Disney Wish, but if if all the trips that I'm supposed to have on DCL that I have planned for right now, just for the the two that I think is going to happen, and nothing's affected by them, then I should hit it. But at the same time, Kylie loves cruising, and I it's I try to make her happy from time to time. So if I can get if I can get her on at least something. a three night, then for a decent price, then I would I would love to be able to do that. Um, all right, last question. Um, um, Lisa PZ asks, "Can we still do live shows like this, maybe once a week when this is all over?" Um, I gotta tell you, uh, I. Uh, I didn't host the, uh, I had a lot of work going on um, and I was exhausted. I didn't host the DVC Q&A that Sean hosted along with uh, Paul Krieger and Pete Shidley the other night, but I watched it, right? I had it on while I was doing some stuff. Um, oh, and somebody in that chat room said that I wasn't hosting because I was a diva. Um, bitch, do you have any idea how hard I'm working right now? Okay. If any idea how it, Craig is like, oh my God. Um, so I just wanted to get that out there because that pissed me off. Um, and I've been a diva from day one. So, and I, and I own it, but that was not the reason I wasn't hosting that night. Um, but I watched it and it was an unusual experience for me because I normally don't watch the shows like that. Right. I'm usually in them, um, not watching them. And it just gave me ideas. So I think you can expect us to be delivering content on some level in this format after this is over. Um, I will never give up doing shows in the studio. A, because we just spent too much money <laughs> and I love the way it looks. I like the production value, but then there is something different here. There is a certain intimacy to this experience that I really love and that people seem to be responding to. So um, whether or not that's uh, because of the situation and the kind of situation we find ourselves in or not, I don't know. But um, there are shows I've wanted to do that didn't make sense to do in the studio and as we're working on this and Craig's gotten this look on his face, like, Oh my God, he's going to make me do these all the time. I'm not Craig. Cause he also doesn't know what I'm talking about. Cause I haven't talked to him about this. Um, and he hates that. He hates when I start making commitments and I haven't talked to him about them first, but, um, you know, you, you have to, you have to look at this situation that we're all in right now. From the standpoint of, you know, where's, you know, where's the opportunity, right? Where's the opportunity to realize something that you hadn't before or change something that uh, you, you need to change or um, look at things in a different way, maybe find gratitude in things that you were taking for granted. Um, those are all opportunities that can come from bad situations. And I really try to go into, you know, any, and I've had plenty in my life, believe me. Um, I can look back on all of them and see positives that came out of it. You learn something new, you change something, you, 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 you're aware of something you missed before. Um, and it's really what I'm trying to do with this. I think we all are. Um, so I think absolutely there are things that we can do that will kind of change up our, 
our way of our way of doing business as a result of this. So, but all right, that's going to do it, folks. Um, I uh, I hope you enjoyed this. It was fun coming out. I just you know I woke Craig up with, hey, let's go out live. <laughs> um, yeah. I kind of like that though. I kind of like that impromptu. Hey, let's go ahead and do that. And I would like to see this continue uh, after after all this is over. But hope you are all staying safe. Uh, again, thank you for your support. Thank you for um, and thank thank everybody for being so decent to each other. See a lot of really good stuff in our groups. Our DCL fan, our DBC fan, Diz Unplugged, uh, Diz Boards on Facebook. Um, to see a lot of good community stuff going on right now and and people being very supportive of each other. Um, and uh, I appreciate that. I really do. So thank you, Craig. Please uh, say hello to your wife for me. No, I will. And, and you're uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Take care. Have a good weekend.